Here we have 13.1, which is identify the operations used to create equivalent systems. So we have a system of equations with two equations and two variables. And they've gone from system A to system B to system C. And so they want us to figure out what happened to each system, okay? So here's the first question. It says, how do we transform system A into system B? And so first thing you need to do is identify which um, line changed, okay? So notice that line two and line two here are exactly the same. So really it was line one that has changed, right? So that automatically tells me that B2 is not the one that was changed. And so I can already outrule two of those choices. It was actually B1 that changed, okay? Now what you need to figure out, and this one's a little bit harder, is to decide whether or not um, its number was simply multiplied by this, the equation in system A, or if there was a number multiplied by the second line in equation A and then added to equation one, okay? Now just a hint or a tip, this usually is not the case unless um, one of the variables has gone missing, okay? So notice that I have both X and Y here in my first equation and I have both X and Y in my second equation. So I'm pretty sure it's not going to be this bottom choice because that's typically the choice that you use or the operations that you perform when you're trying to eliminate a variable, okay? So my guess is that it's going to be this first type of um, transformation that occurred. And then now it's up to me to figure out, well, what number did they multiply by the first equation of system A? So look at all the coefficients, positive five, positive eight, negative four, and then look at the um, coefficients for system B, negative 20, negative 32, and positive 16. So to me, that looks like they're multiplying everything by four. And since all the signs of which, they, it's more important that we say they multiplied every term by negative four, okay? Now the second um, question down here says, how do we transform system B into system C? So now we're going from this system to this system, okay? And so again, it's important to identify which line changed and which one didn't. So I'm looking at line two and I notice that line two is exactly the same in system B and system C. So that means that anything that says that, sis, that line two is changing is going to be wrong. It's line one that changed. And also notice that in order for line one to change, what happened? The X variable term just completely disappeared, okay? And the variable term cannot disappear if all you're doing is multiplying by something, okay? So it's definitely not going to be this um, option here. It is going to be this option down at the bottom. And this one is the hardest of all of them to figure out what happened, okay? So what we've got to do is we got to figure out what we multiply by the second line in system B and then add it to the first line in line B so that the result gives us the first line in system C, okay? So notice that it is the X that canceled out, okay? And so what would I have to apply, what would I have to multiply this coefficient by so that when I combine it with the top coefficient, these guys would completely cancel out? Well, the only way I can cancel out a negative 20 is if I have a positive 20. And the only way to make a positive 20 here is to take this whole line and multiply it by a negative five. And if I do that, I would have a positive 20x, I would have a positive 15y, and I would have a negative 50. And then if I combine that with the top line, I have negative 20 and positive 20, those would wipe each other out. I have negative 32y and positive 15y, that gives me negative 17y. And then I have positive 16 and negative 50, 
which gives me negative 34 when I combine those. So what did I need to be doing? I needed to be multiplying negative five times the second line, then add it or combine it to the first line, and that gives me the first line in system C. And so it's really just a matter of identifying for each system that you get. Um, I do have another example on another page just so that you can see what that will look like. Um, so here we go again, we got system A, system B, system C, and they want to know what's happening, right? How did they go from system A to system B? Well, notice that line one is not changing, it's line two that changed, okay? So I know that I'm going to end up with B2 here not the B1. So if there's B1s in there, you're gonna cross those out. Those are not your options. But I gotta figure out what happened so that I can figure out whether I'm just multiplying um, by something. So this is the way to work. It'll be, if I, if I canceled out all of the B1 options, these are going to be um, the B2 options. And so that's what I have left. I just tried to save myself some paper because I wanted to write a third system, okay? So this is what my options would be once I cancel out the options that had B1 was changing, okay? So these are my two options. So I've got to figure out, is it just multiplying something by the second line to give me the new second line? Or did a variable go away and I have to do figure out this, okay? And if you notice, look at this second line and look at this second line. The Y is completely gone. So I'm not just multiplying by a number, I'm going to have to be combining some lines together. So let's go back to this, to figure out how I got rid of Y. So in order for me to get rid of Y, you have to multiply this guy by something to cancel out the 4Y here. Well, in order to cancel out a positive 4Y, you would need a negative 4Y, which means if I multiply that by negative two, I get positive 14X, I get negative 4Y, and then I get negative 10. If I combine these or add these together, I get 11x, those would cancel, and here I would get negative 33. And notice that's exactly what they have over there. So what did I multiply the first line by? I multiplied it by negative two. So this would be the option that I select, and negative two would be that number that we needed to multiply by. Now, how do they get from system B to system C? Again, notice. The top equation is not changing. So anything that ends with C1 is not going to be an option. And if you cross those out, you're going to end up with um, these two options here. Okay, with C2 at the end, because that's what changed. Okay, now again, you have to decide, did another variable disappear? No, I have X's only here and I have X's only there. So this is not what happened, okay? It's this that happened. And how did they get from here to here? You'll notice that if I divide both sides by 11, I will get x by itself and I'll get negative three on this side. But it's not saying divide b2 by something, it's saying to multiply b2 by something. And this is where it becomes very important that you understand that division the same thing as multiplication by a reciprocal. So let's say eight. If I wanted to cut that in half, I know that the answer is four. Or I could say eight times the reciprocal of two, which is one half. And what is half of eight? It's still four, okay? So instead of dividing by something, you could multiply by its reciprocal. So instead of dividing by 11, I could multiply by the reciprocal of 11, which is one over 11. And let's see if that's true. If I have 11X equal to negative 33, and I multiply this side by one over 11, and I multiply this side by one over 11, the 11s cancel, I get one X equal negative 33 over 11, 1x is just x, and negative 33 over 11 is just negative 3. So it does work out exactly the same as division. Okay. And with matrices, you can't um, 
they don't ever let you divide by something. So you're always going to be multiplying by the reciprocal instead of dividing. Okay. So let's go to the last one and see what happened. And notice, again, I'm running out of room, so I'm just getting real basic here. What happened from A to B? What happened from B to C? Okay. So notice here that nothing changed from the top line. It's the bottom line that changed. But again, notice that um, there's no... Hmm, this one is interesting. This one is very interesting. So B, A, line, line one did not change. So whenever you pick your options, you are going to end up with B2. But the question is, is it A2 times something that gives you that B2? Or is it something times A1 plus A2 that gives you that B2? Okay, because we know B1 is not changing. So don't select the ones that have B1 at the end. Select the option that has B2 at the end. Um, but the issue here is, is like, look, I know that I could divide by nine and I'd get this, but if I divide 11 by nine, I don't get that. If I divide this by nine, I don't get this. Okay. Divide by nine or multiply by one ninth. If I multiply this by one ninth, I get that. If I multiply this by one ninth, I should have a negative 11 over nine. And if I multiply this by one ninth, I should get reduced negative one third, but I don't have that here. So it's not this that happened. Okay, so they try to trick you. Normally, we you only select this whenever we have a variable that disappeared. But if you realize there's nothing you can multiply all three of these. It has to be the same number to all three of these to give you these three new coefficients. And we just can't make that happen. Okay, so the other option is to figure out what did they multiply this by? and then combined it with this to get a positive one coefficient. And maybe that's what happened instead, okay? Well, I noticed that if I multiply all of this by two, I would have negative eight X. And if I combine that negative eight X with the nine X, I do get the positive one X. So let's see if all the other, very, the other terms will fall out as well, okay? So if I multiply it by two, I get negative eight X. I will get positive 14 Y and I will get negative 10. And so then if I combine these, I get one X, I get positive three Y, and then I get negative 13. And that is exactly what is here. So it is this bottom option. It's just not as obvious because there's not a variable missing here, okay? But when I tried to look at this one and see what I could multiply each one of these terms by to get every single one of these terms, I just couldn't make that happen, okay? And so then my only other option was to try to combine the two lines together. Now, from B to C, notice that line two is not changing. It's line one that changed. So I would immediately be trying to look at the two boxes that say, oh, I don't think they have equals. I think they have arrows. or B2 plus B1 will become my new C1. I'm not gonna select any of the ones that end with C2 because C2 is not the one that changed, okay? So did they multiply by something? Well, notice that this time the variable is missing, okay? There was an X here in B1 and now there's not one in B2, in C C1, I'm sorry. So there's a variable that went missing, which means it can't be the option. It doesn't matter what I multiply by, it's not just gonna make a term completely go away, right? So it has to be the fact that I combined two together. Now let's think about it, X went away. So what would I had to have multiplied this by in order to cancel that X out? This would have had to have been a positive four. So if I take this whole equation and I multiply it by positive four, I will end up with positive 4x, positive 12y, and then a negative 52, okay? And then if I combine these two together, the x's would go away. Here I would get 19y, and here I would get the negative 57. So it is going to be this option, and what I multiplied by was a positive 4, okay? 
So I just wanted to give you uh, a few examples of this type of problem because they can be different depending on which um, systems you see. I mean, and they can be completely different from mine, right? Um, but that's what you're looking for. If you see that a variable disappeared, it has to be this option. If a variable did not disappear, then you really need to pay attention to whether or not it just multiplied by something to get you the new, or whether it doesn't matter what you multiply by, you're not gonna get all three of the same terms for each one, because it has to be that same number times each term of that line. And if you can't come up with one single number that will get you all the new uh, terms, then it, they obviously combined some together. Okay, and that was the case here. We couldn't come up with one number that if I multiply it by nine, I multiply it by negative 11, and I multiply it by negative three, that I'll end up with one, three, and negative 13. So since I couldn't find this number, I had to do this option, okay? And always try to figure out what happened and focus on that one term, okay? Don't try to look at all the terms, just focus on one. So for me here, I noticed that it went from nine to one. And so I said, well, what would I have to have multiplied this by so that when I combined it with that, I did just get a one, okay? And I realized that if that was a negative eight and this was a positive nine, I would get that positive one.